Good morning. Um, my name is Harry Kimpel, and I work for New Relic. And I have been always been a software developer by heart. Um, but my personal opinion is that I think we as an industry need to do a much better job at you know, you know, correlating more data, adding more context to the services that we deeply care about. And why do I have this opinion? Well, I think that because observability is all about context, right? Without applying true observability, um, you know, we are just maybe monitoring our servers and, and infrastructure, right? So maybe monitoring the CPU and the memory of our servers and hosts, or maybe monitoring the response time of our applications or microservices. But what is the context that I'm referring to, right? So, well, before I dive into a practical example, let me share a true story of my um, early career. So we impl implemented this application, um, this web application, and we allowed, you know, we had a bug in the system, right, which allowed the, all of the users to access any data of our entire web application, even the paid content that would only be available for subscribers and pay only users, right? So the long story short is that, you know, the CEO at some point um, got so angry that he actually, you know, came to my office. He would literally stay behind my chair and waited for me to, um, to fix that bug and deploy a new fixed release into production. So he would literally stay behind me until this is, this is fixed. So not a really good um, experience for me. The context, um, some valuable context that I um, would maybe have is maybe like a GPS tracker attached to my CEO so that, I, so that I would see him come approaching me, right, and go to my office. So that would maybe be one of the examples of a good context to have. A more practical um, example is the following. Imagine a customer just received his new car and he's trying to enroll his new car in the manufacturer's portal, and for some reason that isn't um, working as expected for the customer. So this failure might trigger a chain of events. You maybe have similar examples in your cases. So the customer will maybe try again, and he may fail again. The customer probably um, at some point calls the hotline or the customer support. The support forwards the ticket to the next level of support, who will then at some point get in touch with the developers and ask them to fix the issue. The developers will maybe you know, look at the issue, try to fix the problem, and try to you know, solve that issue. And that um, is something where you know, the developers get distracted from their day-to-day -day work. Right? They're working maybe on the next new hot feature that uh, the, is so urgently demanded by the business and product owners that they, they get distracted. So they are not able to continue that, that work. At some point, the developer maybe, or the, the customer maybe, you know, gets so angry that he shares his anger on social media. And so that marketing needs to get involved and help, you know, get, um, you know, alleviate that um, um, complaint by the customer and try to get the, you know, the brand experience um, protected. So all of this, you know, uh, is relevant information um, for me to have in my day-to-day -day job, right? All of this is context that I'm maybe interested in in applying to my services and maybe help me as a software developer, but also help maybe others in the environment to, um, you know, depend upon their role, right? Another example is probably a little bit more tangible. Um, the most common failures are probably service or physical service disruptions. So we cannot avoid these even with the best high availability architecture in mind, right, we cannot avoid these service disruptions. So, but what about a service response with unavailability? Or maybe, you know, the client did something that it shouldn't have done. So personally, I would also consider a response duration of larger than the 99th percentile of my entire responses as a fail as well, right? And this is a little bit, um, you know, reflected in the so-called Aptex score, which is an industry um, score from an observability perspective. But maybe, you know, this issue, um, you know, the site can be reached, you know, there's an error that is happening, you know, a lot of um, failure. But, you know, when we agree on the fact that some 4xx errors are normal, we might also agree that some, you know, 4xx responses shouldn't be there at all. So, 
I trust that the 404 issues are kind of like a low-hanging fruit, right, to solve. But the cost of them and their context related to infrastructure budget is quite significant. And this may be important information to gather and take into account when we look at all the infrastructure. So taking also into account the cost perspective of our services as part of the context that we collect. And this may lead to, you know, like I said, significant infrastructure costs. So these examples, you know, they should hopefully inspire you to think about ways on how you could improve your visibility into your specific use cases the real superpower of observability, in my opinion, is the context it hopefully brings to life. Um, and that is why I do have the strong opinion that context is really king, and that is the real superpower of observability at the end of the day. Thank you very much. <laughs>